I used to read in the Village Voice uh, about um, CBGBs and Max's Kansas City and, and the scene in New York, and it sounded real exciting just because it seemed so open. Like it, it wasn't formula rock bands, it was all kinds of different bands playing all kinds of different music. And that's what a lot of people don't realize about punk rock. When it started, it wasn't a certain style of music. It was more like an environment for people that made any kind of music that was kind of outcast from the formulaic rock at the time had a venue to play. It was kids for the first time, like writing their own songs, forming their own bands, putting on their own shows, uh, putting out their own records, putting out their own magazines. It was kids doing that, and it was outside of the industry. It was like the part of like, it was, it was true rock and roll. It was underground, it was out state or government or corporate sponsorship. It was just done on the, the energy of these kids alone. And I think that it kicked open a lot of doors and it opened up a, a sort of a, a, an area that where Later on, it became okay for anyone to play music, and it was just part of that. It was part of like a process of like re, sort of uh, regaining or reclaiming uh, culture for for you know young people. Oh, the first show we played out in White Rock uh, at this like day out on White Rock, which is a beach town in Vancouver. So the entire audience is these all these long haired greasy rock and roll grease grease balls, right? Just you know, uh, you know they were into like. Uh, uh, Prism and Steely Dan and uh, just this crap, right? You know, <laughs> and we got up, we got up there and played, and uh, all of a sudden people were just throwing lunch bags and garbage, and we started throwing them back. And we went to Skulls, and of course we all had black leather jackets. We're like, we're from Vancouver, we're the Skulls, screw you, type thing, right? And they're all. And then they came up, they wanted to fight, right? They had a bunch of these guys sort of bum-rushed the stage. And sort of like, you know, fists were flying, right? And we just sort of like, you know, we got kicked off after about eight songs, right? And uh, then that's kind of how we got our break, because uh, we formed the Georgia Strait, which is a big uh, weekly mag up in Vancouver and has been around for like 25 years or so, you know, always supported the music scene. And uh, what happened, I phoned the main music writer, Tom Harrison, who's a real great Canadian uh, music journalist, and I said, yeah, we just, my band, The Skulls, we, uh, yeah, we took on White Rock and we won type thing. He goes, <laughs> who is this? And I, it's the first time I ever told anybody that my name is Shithead. I went like, it's uh, Joe Shithead. <laughs> okay, Mr. Shithead, tell me what happened. So I told him, and then uh, the next day, the next week, he came out in the call and was like, undoubtedly Vancouver's most hated band, The Skulls. <laughs> and we went, yeah, we made it, motherfucker, we made it. <laughs> Back then, there was like a cultural chasm, like if you were into punk rock, you were really weird, and you could get beat up, right? By, there was like the, the establishment people who were like, hey man, we're into the, you know, we're into the good old music, you know, <clears throat> driving around in Camaros or whatever, and the punk rock people are on skateboards, or I drove Volkswagens. Like, you see, I always been, you know, Volkswagen, I drove a Volkswagen bus, but, um, the, how cars work in American culture, but so so the, it was Buzz and and um, Matt and Mike. They had the the, the drummer Mike and um, you know and Buzz was he was an, a punk evangelical he evangelist. He would just go around and like preach that punk rock is the way, man. This is the new sound, and this is like like I I recognize him because I read the. I got a. I was in Montesano like a couple years before, and I got a hold of the Vidad, I think, the the school newspaper, and there was a column by like Buzz Osborne about why punk rock is like superior to conventional rock and roll. Skinyard had played shows with Nirvana before I was in the band, and then when I joined the band, um, there there were two events that I remember. One was. Skinyard was playing a show in San Francisco at this place called the I Beam, which was you know this big cavernous, you know rock club right on ha on Haight Ashbury in San Francisco, and we we got there a day early, and uh, Kurt and Chris from Nirvana were in town to go see this drummer that they were going to audition for the band, so we all met up. Um, 
I think it was it was me and and Jack and Ben McMillan, two or two or three of us from Skinyard met Kurt and Chris from Nirvana at the I Beam to go see this punk band called Scream, whose drummer was Dave Grohl, and and uh, they said, yeah, we're we're just checking out this drummer. I think we're gonna um, audition him for the band. So this would have been in, um, I think it would have been in early 1990, I think probably. And, uh, and so th there was nobody in the club. I mean, there's maybe 25, 30 people and us. And, you know, Dave was just a monster on the drums. And, and we all said, uh, I think that's your audition. You should probably get him in your band before somebody else does. 